all around the world, when disasters strike, there are lives lost, economic losses, livelihoods destroyed, and people's health affected. Sometimes, even the infrastructure that we have spent years of our sweat and toil to build gets destroyed. Our already weak road network systems sometimes get inundated. The year 2020 is with us, and we have another opportunity to celebrate this year's International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction. Priority two of the Sendai framework is our theme for the celebration. This talks about governance, strengthening DR governance to manage disaster risk. When disasters strike, better risk governance can save lives. When government ensures that DRR is a priority, whole communities are protected. Nothing sets back development like a disaster. To strengthen disaster risk governance means having a clear strategy, strong institutions, laws and designated budgets. All this will ensure efficient management for disaster risk. As we celebrate this day in Ghana, this is what a cross-section of the citizens have to say. For about the last five years or so, EPA, but le led by myself, and then also um, together with NADMO and then NDPC, NDPC's National Development Planning Commission, actually developed um, a mainstreaming tool for disaster risk reduction and climate change. And so we work hand in hand because their objective as disaster people is to make sure that um, if possible, you prevent it, but when it occurs, you reduce the impact. In a number of ways, um, as all other ministries, the ministry is responsible for coordinating, initiating policies, programs, reviewing um, laws, regulations that enhances the operation within the environment, science, technology, and innovation sector. Now the mandate of the Ghana Meteorological Agency is to provide weather forecasts and then to give warnings where it is due because we know that climate and weather kind of like is a very serious thing that destroys life and property. So the Ghana Meteorological Agency is mandated to be uh, issue warnings when some of these things are coming and we liaise with other organizations like the police, NADMO, uh, the hydrological services, so that we can actually give things like uh, flood warning and other places, so that those who are concerned could could take up the various response teams can, can act. There are measures in place that support response when disasters happen. Aside of that, the ministry also facilitates education of farmers and the people and stakeholders that we work with to be aware that climate change is real and climate change comes along with potential disasters and therefore we sensitize farmers and stakeholders on their preparedness to brace themselves to uh, adequately prepare for such disasters when they occur. You know we collaborate with NADMO so that we'll be able to um, give information to NAMO as to the level of uh, uh, the water in these water bodies so that NADMO could quickly uh, inform or alert uh, communities which will be affected as the water level rises. So that is in a way, you know, helping with the uh, uh, early flood uh, warning system. Oil spillage, fortunately we haven't had uh, any major incident in the country, in our territorial waters, but the fishermen are advised not to fish too close to the oil rigs. It's, it's not easy because sometimes they have the good fishing grounds near the oil rigs and the, the temptations, but they are always advised not to go that close. Yeah, the, the challenges we face are the way of dissemination of this information. Because what happens is that sometimes you have to call into a radio station 
and some of these people might be in the middle of an event and therefore cannot break through for this information to get through. So those are the main challenges. The challenges are many. Basically, it's about um, financing, it's about awareness, it's about logistics, it's about, um, uh, what do you call, human capacity. Climate change related issues must be addressed across sectors. So like multi-sectorial approach to implementing um, issues that have to do with the consequences of climate change. So I expect that in terms of um, governance structures that should be um, put in place, we should have all key stakeholders coming on board. The, the way forward is we have to, you know, plan our communities well. Some of these issues are arising because of the way we plan our communities, the way we develop our communities. People are encroaching on drainage channels and so on and so forth. So planning is necessary, very, very necessary at the assembly, municipal level, metropolitan level, so that we'll all be speaking to the same issue. We should have a lead agency who is able to mobilize all other agencies that are affected or that are yes that are affected by disasters so that we could jointly put together frameworks that will make us respond positively and adequately and quickly when disasters occur. Well, we engage the community when it comes to education and knowledge sharing about uh, disaster issues in our community, especially disaster-prone areas. We we'll help the institution, the government institution, when it comes to policy, how to map the communities to know to, to identify the disaster-prone areas. And also, we we'll see how to help this institution when it comes to supporting the affected victims when it comes to disaster in the community. We help with development of policies on flooding, um, on water and drought, working with institutions on how they could implement uh, these policies and prepare them by building their capacity in this area. That's basically what we do. What we do is we work at all levels. So you are likely to find us today maybe in Tepa, in the Hafwano district. The next day, you are likely to find us in New York attending a major international conference and so on. And many of the discussions that go on at the national level here, particularly in relation to issues of climate change, disaster risk management, uh, women's rights, you are likely to find us as actively as possible in terms of our engagement. So you see also uh, one of the core organizations, as well as you know, civil society organizations that have been able to play the, a pivotal role in trying to integrate persons with disability. The see also as it well, like person living with disability organizations, have to identify itself and work in tandems with the, with the situations that is really on the ground. And so as a result of it, we try to liaise with other stakeholders with the implementations of the policies that has been enshrined within the government sectors. They monitor the situation, they pick a policy document, they look at it, and then they do a kind of assessment. How is the implementation being rolled out? What are the issues that the policy should address? Is policy addressing those issues? And if policy is not addressing those issues, where is the gaps? So they identify the gaps, and if need be, that they need to go to the community to sensitize them like on this uh, water related issue, open defecation related issue, forestry related issues, mining issues, so they go to the ground. Ghana Red Cross role, like I said, the introduction of a community disaster prevention team at those communities help a lot because those people, the volunteers that we, the volunteer group that we have formed, they are creating awareness, okay? They are creating awareness. So they are uh, giving information on early warning signs and then also supporting 
uh, evacuations when it comes to disaster within those communities? Um, the main thing that the Institute of Environmental Assessment um, have done over the years is we design the flood and drought um, assessment and preparedness for the country. That is something that we, we did in collaboration with a number of government institutions and that deals with a number of um, factors. One has to do with how do we monitor the success of implementation of the service management, um, who will be affected and what needs to be given. For instance, there are working with the Ministry of um, Gender, Children and Protection, Social Protection, you find that there are issues with disbursement of funding. And their mechanism designed on how they need to do this, all in the, the policy document that we worked and submitted to the government. The policy is only relevant when it is implemented at all levels. So I'm thinking that we could take advantage of the COVID experience in order to now pick the regional documents and domesticate it at the national and local levels for implementation. They should do general engagement, first of all, and then eventually they'll be able to identify those that have interest and those that do understand and appreciate the issues to take it up. It may not necessarily mean um, another NGO will be informed, but it could be that in their area of work, they could add this bit to it. I think I will actually appeal to government that will look at even what really, uh, the last Sunday, was it Saturday or there about, what even happened on the Kasua Road? If persons with disability who I have to use their wheelchairs and other things, you know sincerely, a lot of them would not be able to access that particular road for the whole day. And it's not that particular place. There are a lot of, a lot of areas within the uh, uh, Ghanaian sector, particularly in that crowd, which are disaster prone areas. And where you lose a lot of this person living with disability are residents. We have at the PhD level, we have a course that specifically deals with DRR, that's disaster risk reduction. The last one that we did was with Fung Katamansu, and they worked on the um, landfill site. At a point in time, I realized that people said the whole place had, has caught fire. Aside that, landfills were not supposed to be burning waste. But out of nothing, you realize people, whether deliberately or otherwise. So that's what they did. All the reports are with the assemblies. <music> Government or policy makers should challenge tertiary institutions or institutions of higher learning to provide them with real-time data and information to inform this because we always say that disaster doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't inform of its arrival. But the best way to reduce the risk is to prepare. You can go to the schools and educate them and form clubs in the schools to help them so that they'll also be able to educate their parents, friends, family to prevent disasters. Uh, some of the few activities that we have been working in partnership with the government, particularly with the Ministry of Agriculture and NADMO, focus on getting information early to prevent uh, risks to food insecurity. The Developing Risk Management Approaches for Climate and Health Risk Project is implementing these disaster risk reduction activities. And this project is jointly funded by a public-private partnership, which is developed of GIZ on behalf of the BMZ and also Alliance Climate Solutions. In terms of disaster risk reduction activities, we are looking to improve the flood mitigation measures, especially affecting the um, basin, the you know developments within the basin, 
and also to build up adaptive capacity of the city to withstand um, flooding. Um, so those are the key focus. But related to that is of, of course the contributory factors to flooding, which is sanitation, solid waste management, poor solid waste management. And that's what uh, our project also addresses. This set of data we collect is uh, something that we do once every five years. This is a very comprehensive data. It is very well disaggregated. It collects uh, food insecurity and also nutrition. And it's uh, what we call food security, comprehensive food security and vulnerability uh, analysis. That information is very detailed, it costs a lot of money, it costs a lot of uh, uh, time, but it's something that we do, including all the various partners, the Ghana Statistical Service is the lead agency uh, of the government and also the Minister of Agriculture. This is data that comes for every five years. You profile the entire country of food insecure or non-food insecure regions and people. So these are information we use for planning purposes, uh, not for WFE only, but for everybody who works in Ghana. So all partners appreciate it and they use that information uh, on, a, on a regular basis. Three local authorities, and one is the Accra Metropolitan Area, or the Accra Metropolitan Assembly, and the Ghan East Municipality, and also the Ghan West Municipality. The project's aim is to prepare the ground for implementing REX transfer solutions into an integrated flood risk management approach. And this is for the local authorities within the greater Accra metropolitan area in Ghana. We have to look at also um, improving upon the capacities of the different agencies that whose activities would either improve upon disaster risk reduction or whose activities creates the challenges that lead to disasters. Those whose activities create the disasters, they should have a better appreciation of those activities and find ways in which they can reduce the risk that their activities pose. And for those whose activities are to help to mitigate against these disasters or to reduce the risk of these disasters. I think uh, coordination is very important because we see that a lot of partners are doing a bit here and there, but I think the coordination part is important, not just here in, at Accra level, but also at the regional and sub-regional level. Flow of information, information as quickly as possible, getting it at the central level and you know using it for a response by various partners is important. So I would say the coordination and the information data collection is very important. We could see that currently different organizations are implementing different initiatives. And sometimes you ask yourself, are these initiatives all being fit as one? So I would advocate that at least there will be like these coordination mechanisms among various institutions or partners implementing disaster risk reduction could be better structured so that um, it would reduce implementing silos approaches in different areas. And with this too, we could also say, okay, fine. So with disaster risk reduction, we have actually made use of our resources and achieved a better returns um, from, from these um, initiatives or approaches that has been implemented. It's high time we understand DRR for what it is. Disaster risk reduction is a development issue. Nothing sets back development like a disaster. We can spend millions of cities building our nation, but if these are without DRR considerations, then it will come to nothing when disasters strike. Let's love our environment. Let's love our country and let's reduce our risks.